Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service. Wanted to provide you with an update. First one for 2024, so Happy New Year. We're taking a look at precipitation expected for upcoming January 2024. Behind me is the outlook for the next uh, week where we have two storm systems moving into Southern California. Neither are strong or significant, but they will bring rain and uh, impactful snow in our higher elevations due to the colder nature of these storms. So let's take a look. This is a summary. Um, again, not expecting large amounts with storm number one, but still a burst of rain. And some of that rain will be heavy. Uh, rainfall amounts generally a quarter to half inch, depending on where you are, uh, a little more in the mountains. Uh, I mentioned the snow. We have not seen much snow this year. In fact, our mountain areas have only received from a trace to three inches, okay? And um, here we are in January. So any snowfall will be significant, especially with the colder air coming in, freezing the roads. Could see some thunderstorms. Um, that is definitely a possibility with the cold front Wednesday morning and even uh, isolated in the afternoon. An additional storm for next weekend on Sunday, that looks like it's gonna go a little further to the east. Um, so still wind and some precipitation, maybe not as cold or a direct impact. Okay, I included, since it's 2024, the top 10 list of weather events for calendar year 2023. See if those were impactful in your area. I put the dates and what generally happened and the impacts and the amount of precipitation, wind, rain in those particular storm systems. Now, when you add it all up, certainly um, 2023, the water year from October to October, uh, with all those atmospheric rivers, 13 of them, was probably the biggest impact. Take a look. The latest satellite image shows that we are still in El Nino, the warm phase along the equator shown here. Uh, water continues to be above normal, warmer than average along the California coast and the Baja coast. Uh, but El Nino, strong El Nino remains in terms of the sea surface temperatures departure from normal along the equator. Now, our precipitation has been lacking. Uh, temperatures have been above average, warmer across the entire West so far this water year since October 1st. Most notable is our precipitation, 25 to 50% or less than half full for much of Southern California as shown here. The only exception is where they had major rainfall uh, just before Christmas in Santa Barbara and Ventura County. Snowpack, it's not just California though, we are at 25%, one quarter of our snowpack compared to average where we should be. Uh, but it's been across most of the United States all the way to New England uh, with little if any snowpack. Why? Uh, this is the average weather pattern since November 1, when we typically start getting snowstorms across the country, even out west. Uh, we do see a dip in the jet stream, which has brought some big storms to Seattle and a couple storms to California. But overall, we see that weather pattern is bottlenecked uh, with a big dome of warm air over the central part of the United States, similar to what they saw last spring with all the wildfires in Canada, except for now it's winter. Uh, so, but this is a greatly affecting uh, temperatures, warmer, and also um, lack of snow. So we do expect rain coming up and snow in our mountains. Here's the latest precipitation forecast. Take a look at your area, generally quarter to half inch on Wednesday. Now this storm has limited moisture uh, and it's fast moving. So it's very weak overall, even though it is unstable and has a lot of cold air. Speaking of cold air, the snow in the mountains, uh, several inches up around 6,500 feet in some of the mountain pass levels, and even a trace to an inch down to 5,000 feet. There will be some wind with this storm, um, especially Wednesday morning, winds coming in from the west. Uh, that'll be the biggest impact from this storm uh, in our desert slopes and mountain passes. Here's the weather pattern that's giving us the wind and the precipitation and the colder air. First storm is Wednesday, as mentioned, January 3rd. Uh, next storm takes a very similar track from the northwest, so a dry type of path, but 
tapping into cold air. Uh, and that's for next weekend on Sunday into early Monday. So this next storm for Sunday, January 7th, uh, continues to look weaker or drier uh, as it tracks further to the east. So here's the latest precipitation forecast with amounts now forecast to be less than what we're uh, expected to receive on Wednesday, January 3rd. Is there another storm? It does look like uh, in the middle of January, around January 11th, uh, a very similar track from the northwest. So you get it, uh, cool, cold air, relatively dry, uh, moves across California uh, for the next shot of precipitation and wind. Now the jet stream, we've been watching the jet stream develop since December over the Central Pacific. That's what sent the big massive swell and high surf into Central Southern California. But the core of that jet stream remains over the Pacific. Uh, and so we're getting a split part of the jet stream. In fact, that split continues even with storm one and storm two. You can see the split uh, where part of the cold air is going to the north and the subtropical jets going to the south. What this does mean is that the subtropical jet uh, going into the Gulf Coast continues to get significant energy. And you can see that here uh, with the third storm potential on January 11th, a severely split jet stream, the core of it staying way out over the Pacific water, um, but subtropical jet stream, very active and strong in the south. Here's the outlook. Uh, so the Southeast remains above average even day six through 14, uh, with California being right about average. So a couple storms will keep us about average um, since they're not significant major storms. You look at temperatures, that's where it's most noteworthy. We're below average, uh, high probability of being below average in Southern California. Like we talked about the cold Northwest flow uh, descending across the region. When you look out for the month of January, the latest outlook issued December 31 still calls for above average odds for Southern California uh, and below average for temperature, above average for precipitation. The main confidence continued to be the Southeast United States for wetter than normal. The computer models are suggesting uh, the wet conditions we just talked about in week one to 10 days, but drier conditions for much of California potentially for the rest of January. The seasonal outlook was, was issued just before Christmas, still hanging on for above normal precipitation in California, especially Central California, overall between January and March and milder conditions. So this is an outlook combination January through March or the rest of the winter.